Hello all of you. Let's quickly understand what is the fees structure for actual exams from the UK body IFA. So I have written all these fees in INR. The fees when you pay is in uh, pounds. So I have converted it into INR, taking approximately uh, as hundred rupees as the conversion. Now uh, considering there are few considerations and assumptions that I have made over here. One basic thing is that there are thirteen papers that you have to appear for. So when you are in your college in your graduation uh, be it 3 years or 4 years we take that you will be able to finish off all the CMCS CB uh, papers and CP1 exam considering you are able to finish 7 plus 1 8 exams some of them take CB uh, CB3 exam this CB1 plus CB Two. some of them take CB3 exam over here as well so depending we have taken that all the CB papers and CMCS and CP1 you are completing in your college so since you do not have any of your own personal income or if your own personal income is below the uh, level which the below the income level which the IFO is mentioning so you will be el eligible for the reduced rate now if you are eligible for the reduced rate then you will be uh, it will cost approximately 20,000, 18 to 20,000 for each CMCS papers. For CB papers, it will cost around 14 to 15,000, and for CP1, it will cost you somewhere around 38,000. This is in your reduced rate. Now, once you have uh, completed your graduation and in your you are in your job, then you will not be any more eligible for the reduced rate, and then you will have to pay a full fees. So, for full fees, we have taken CP2, CP3. CP2 costs approximately 50,000. This is the full rate. This is not the reduced rate. So, if you are appearing these papers as a student and you are eligible for reduced rate, then you will be paying somewhat very less uh, of these amounts. These written in blue are your full fees. So, CP2 is somewhere around 50,000, CP3 is 35,000, SP is 35,000 each and SA will be again 35,000. So, this is we have, uh, this is we have assumed that you are in your, uh, you are working and so not be eligible for reduced rate and these are the different uh, fee structure when you are appearing in the full rate and if you are appearing in reduced rate, obviously it will be less. There is a one-time membership fees, which is the membership uh, fees you provide at the time of taking membership. That can be after clearing any one CM1 or CS1 paper or it can also be before uh, clearing it whenever you are taking membership. It will be again around 13 to 14,000 depending whatever the pounds uh, and INR uh, uh, exchange rate is. Annual fees is 7500 This you have to pay in October every year after you have taken the membership. This is a renewal fees that you have to pay to IFA body every year. All of these fee structures are of IFA. All right. Each time you sit for an exam, you have to pay this fees. And if, for example, due to any circumstances, I'm not able to clear a particular paper, then I have to pay the entire fees again. This one-time membership fees is just one-time fees. You don't have to pay it again. What you have to pay is 7,500 every year in October, whether or not you appear for the exam just to keep your membership status this is also a reduced rate fees that i am mentioning uh, in case of full rate this will definitely go up now talking about full rate fees why it's very high and again at the same time do i have to bear all of this no so once you start working your companies generally all the companies actual companies they reimburse their employees with the fees some companies will reimburse you once you clear your examination so it's a one-time reimbursement for example, I am sitting for CP2. I am not able to clear it. They will not reimburse. Second time when I sit and clear, they will reimburse. Some companies will reimburse you up till three terms. So, they reimburse you three times for each paper. So, depending on whatever the company policy, if you are studying properly, all these fees will be reimbursed by your company. Similarly, the annual fees that you give every October, that will also be reimbursed by your company. So, once you have graduated and once you have started working, the burden of these fees is not on you. It goes on the company. Company is reimbursing you. They are motivating you to appear these papers and at the same time reimbursing you for the same. And definitely there is also increments happening depending on whatever the company uh, 
policy is so if i take the total cost it is somewhat approximately this is 20000 into 4 so let's suppose this is coming as 80000 1 lakh 1 lakh 50000 if i just take a very approx figure is what it takes in college if you are appearing for all the papers it can be a little less little more depending on the number of papers you are clearing along the 3 to 4 years of your graduation which you have to pay to the ifa now let us quickly also see the time requirements for each of these papers so for cm cs papers we say generally it takes around 300 plus hours now for cs1 it can be slightly less for cs2 it can be slightly higher but approximately you have to give 300 plus hours of study if you are taking classes then it's inclusive of classes right uh for cb1 cb2 it is appro approximately 150 plus as cb3 is a um it's a a uh, module based examination you don't have to actually memorize anything so it the time will go down it's not 150 hours it is somewhere around 25 to 30 hours cp1 is again 300 hours plus approximately we are taking it 300 hours cp2 is 70 hours cp3 is 50 hours these two are considerably um papers which need less time but it's not very easy again but yes it's need it needs definitely less time so we generally say that you can appear for these papers once you start uh, working and make sure you clear all these important papers before you start working because of the time that it needs and giving 300 plus hours along with your job becomes a little difficult so that is the reason we say that these papers should be completed in your graduation sp and sc papers needs 200 plus hours each depending on um so it again depends on you so this is the required time the exams happen every 6 months in the month of april and september so you have good 6 months time to give this much of time to each paper which students easily give there are students who are clearing two two papers three papers in fact in one single attempt so this is the entire fee structure of ifoa and the time requirements for each paper if you have any further questions you can let us know in the description below thank you